In this video, I would like to discuss a tablecloth pulling trick that you probably have seen before. The idea is that if you have, say, a glass of wine on a table, on the tablecloth that's sitting on a table, if you pull on the tablecloth fast enough, you will be able to uh, take the tablecloth without uh, breaking the glass, without uh, having the glass fall off the table. So I have a little demonstration here, a little simulation here of that, and I actually encourage you to do it at home if you if you want, maybe not with a glass of wine, but something else. And uh, so when you pull on the tablecloth, the glass is going to slide a little bit on the table and finally come to rest. Now notice that in this problem, as you're doing that, there is friction between the tablecloth and the glass. Right? Let's say that the coefficient of friction between those two surfaces is mu. Once the tablecloth is gone, there will be a coefficient of friction between the glass and the table. Let's say for simplicity that that coefficient of uh, kinetic friction is also mu. So if that's the case, here's the problem I want to pose to you. If the glass is sitting a distance d from the edge of the table, what is the maximum amount of time delta t max that the tablecloth can be in contact with the glass so that the glass won't fall off the edge of the table if placed initially at a distance d? Now why should the uh, time of contact between the tablecloth and the glass be important? Well, for as long as the tablecloth is in contact with the glass and you're pulling on the tablecloth, the tablecloth is applying a force to the glass which is going to make it move. It's only when the tablecloth has been removed from under the glass that the glass is finally going to decelerate and come to rest. So, evidently, the time that the tablecloth is in contact with the glass is a crucial parameter. And let's look at the forces that are acting on the glass as you are pulling on the tablecloth, which is still under the glass. Well, there is going to be friction. The contact force between the tablecloth and the glass has two components. In the vertical direction, we have normal force and the weight of the glass. And that direction is not very important because there's no motion happening in the vertical direction in this problem. The important force is the contact force between the tablecloth and the glass, which is the tangential component, is what we call the friction. It's going to be friction, kinetic friction, between the tablecloth and the glass because the two surfaces are rowing against each other. Now, the direction of friction in uh, for this part of the motion is something that you have to spend a few seconds thinking about it. Is it going to be that way or is it going to be that way? Now, if you remember, the rule that we gave is that the kinetic friction that object B puts on A is opposite to the direction of the velocity of A with respect to B. So if you call A the glass and B the tablecloth, in what direction is the velocity of the glass with respect to the tablecloth? So let's take a look at this in slow motion. The glass is sitting a certain distance from the left edge of the tablecloth and as you pull on the tablecloth, the glass is moving towards the back of the tablecloth. It began a certain distance to the right of the edge and the glass reaches the edge of the tablecloth. So this indicates that the motion of the glass with respect to the tablecloth is in this direction. This is the velocity of the glass with respect to the tablecloth. The glass is moving towards the back of the tablecloth, that's to the left. Following a rule that the force of friction that the tablecloth puts on the glass should be opposite to that, it tells us that the kinetic friction between the cloth and the glass is going to be pointing to the right. This is the force that is responsible for accelerating the glass to the right. The glass, remember that it was at rest initially. When you start pulling on the tablecloth, the glass starts to move to the right for as long as the tablecloth is under the glass. So this force of friction, as you remember, kinetic friction is the coefficient of kinetic friction times the normal, which in this problem would be equal to the mass times the acceleration of gravity. So for this part of the motion, we have figured out that the acceleration of the glass 
while the glass is in contact with the tablecloth, the glass will be accelerating at a rate equal to the net force acting on the glass, which is the force of kinetic friction, divided by the mass, and that gives you mu k times g. So the acceleration of the glass at the beginning of the motion, while the tablecloth is under the glass, is equal to mu sub k times g. Now let's figure out what's the acceleration of the glass after the tablecloth is gone. So after the tablecloth has moved from under the glass, the glass is going to be left with some velocity, and the glass now is rolling directly against the table, which means that there is going to be kinetic friction between the table and the glass. Now in what direction is the kinetic force now? Well, the velocity of the glass, velocity of A, with respect to B, which is the table, is a vector that points to the right. The glass is left moving towards the right. So that tells us that the force that the table puts on the glass, this is the kinetic friction, that force must be opposite to that. So the force that is acting on the glass, when the glass is moving to the right, rubbing against the table, is F sub k. So we can write that the net force acting on the glass in this case is minus mu sub k times ng. The minus is because the force is now pointing to the left. In the previous part of the motion, when the tablecloth was under the glass, the force was to the right, so that had positive sign. The acceleration of the glass for this part of the motion is going to be negative mu sub k times g. So now let's make a plot of the velocity of the glass as a function of time. The glass starts with an initial velocity that is equal to zero, and it starts to accelerate to the right. This is the part of the motion where the tablecloth is under the glass. So between t equals zero and t of contact, the glass is accelerating to the right, so if this is the velocity with respect to time, the velocity is increasing in positive value, that means the glass is moving to the right. The slope of that line is the acceleration, which is mu k times g. Now after the tablecloth has, is no longer in contact with the glass, then the glass is rolling directly against the table which means that now, as we calculated before, the acceleration would be negative. The velocity of the glass is decreasing because the acceleration is now negative mu sub k times g. So the velocity of the glass starts to decrease, 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 decrease until at a certain time the velocity of the glass is zero and the glass has come to rest at some distance away from the edge of the table. Now every time you have a plot of velocity versus time you should ask yourself what does the area under the curve represent? The shaded area here, what does that tell you? As you remember from previous videos the area under the plot of velocity versus time is the displacement, which we can call here delta x. So this area is delta x, and it corresponds to the total distance traveled by the glass from the instant when it started to move to the final location where it stopped. That distance is delta x, and it is equal to the area under the velocity versus time plot for that glass. So it seems like that would be an important quantity to calculate because remember that to pull off this trick successfully, that distance traveled by the glass cannot be bigger than the distance between the initial location of the glass and the edge of the table. So to pull it off, we need to make sure that delta x is smaller or equal than d initial distance between the glass and the edge of the table. 
So what this is telling you is that we're going to have to calculate that delta x and then compare it to d. And that will give us information about what's the maximum amount of time that the tablecloth can be in contact with the glass. So from the area of a triangle you can calculate delta x. Now since delta x is the area under the velocity versus time plot, and that area is a triangle, we can calculate delta x by taking one half of the base of the triangle, multiply by its height. The base of the triangle is equal to this time, so delta x is equal to one half of, in terms of time, the base of the triangle is equal to two times the contact time, the time that the tablecloth was in contact with the glass. That's because of the symmetry of the triangle. This slope here is equal to this slope here. So that means that this, that from here to here, that must be half of the base of the triangle. And that distance is what we call T contact. So because the coefficient of kinetic friction between the glass and the tablecloth is the same as the coefficient of kinetic friction between the glass and the table, then this triangle has that symmetry and the total time that the glass was moving is going to be two times the amount of time that the glass was in contact with the tablecloth. So that's B and the height of the triangle is equal to the velocity when the cloth loses contact with the glass and that it's easy because the slope of this line is the acceleration. So V contact is going to be equal to the acceleration which is mu k times g multiplied by the amount of time which is what we're calling T contact. So this is the height of the triangle. So we multiply here by a factor mu k times g times t contact. So what do we get? So the answer is that delta x is going to be equal to 2 cancels with 2, t contact and t contact gives you t contact square, so mu k times g times t contact square. Now remember that the condition for this trick to work is that delta x must be smaller than d, the original distance from the edge of the table to the glass. So the condition that we have to satisfy is that this must be smaller or equal than d. So that tells us that for this trick to work, the time that the tablecloth is in contact with the glass should satisfy that it must be smaller or equal than d divided by mu k g and we need to take the square root. So that means that the answer to the question of what's the maximum time that the tablecloth can be in contact with the glass, I guess we call it t delta t maximum, will be for the equal using the equal sign and that should be equal to the square root of d divided by mu k g. And that's the final answer to the question.